Hello, I'm Tom Meeks, and this is 3D Design for Fun and Life, featuring Moment of Inspiration, using the uniquely easy noun and verb method. This session is palette three verbs, tab two transform, row one, move, copy, rotate, and scale. Tab two of palette three is aptly named, transform, to change markedly the appearance or form of. The verbs on tab one of palette three directly create 3D objects from 2D curves. But the verbs and verb groups on tab two, transform, have another purpose. Each is designed to make significant changes to objects both before and after the 3D creation process. By now, it should be clear that the steps for completing every noun and verb in Moment of Inspiration are clearly presented in the top right of the screen. Since the purpose of this session is a quick introduction, we'll skip mentioning each step to concentrate on the functionality of each verb as quickly as possible. The Move Verb we can move an object in moment of inspiration at any time by clicking on it, and while holding down the left mouse button, move the object around at will. But the move verb provides us with much greater precision over final placement. We evoke the move verb by clicking on the move button. We'll select the small circle and click on done. As we hover over the circle, snap points will appear as small X shapes. While not mandatory, it's usually a good idea to click on one of these snap points if we want precise placement after the move. We'll click on the center snap point. The prompt changes to pick target point. Our target will be inside the rectangle. As we move inside the rectangle, more snap points show up. We'll select one of the snap points indicating the center of the rectangle's curved corners. We snap to one of the points and press the left mouse button to place the moved object precisely. Without detailed comment, we'll move some of the other objects by first clicking on the object and then clicking on the Move Verb button. In this move, we'll make use of features known as construction lines formed by holding the left mouse button down as we select the topmost and leftmost points on the freeform object before finally placing the two selected objects. In this course where there is a specific session on using construction lines and other built-in guide features of moment of inspiration. But for now, we'll move on to the copy verb. The copy verb. There are several ways to copy and paste objects in Moment of Inspiration. The significance of this copy verb is that it allows for multiple pastes from just one copy. We'll copy the small circle and place three more circles centered in the other three corners. Click on Cancel to stop the paste process. This helps make things go very quickly, doesn't it? The Rotate Verb Group We open the Rotate Verb Group by clicking on the Rotate button. It reveals two Rotate Verbs, Rotate and Rotate Axis. Rotate Rotate The Rotate Verb uses a selected point as the center of rotation to change the orientation of an object. We pick the object to rotate. Then the center of the rotation. Next, the reference point that acts as the handle for our rotation. And finally, the new angle of rotation. We can use the mouse or enter the angle directly. We'll delete the first test object. We are in the front view. When designing for 3D printing, it is very important to be sure that objects are flush with the table and completely flat. In the front view, the printer table is represented by the x-axis line. We need to ensure our object is flat on this line if it is to print correctly. We'll first use the move verb to drop the bottom left corner on the x-axis. Then we will use the rotate verb 
to align the bottom of the 3D object with the table plane. The object is now safe to print. Rotate axis. The rotate verb is fine when things are lined up clearly with the X, Y, and Z axis. But sometimes that is not the case. This is where the rotate axis verb is useful. In this example, we have two adjacent pentagons. We want to rotate one of the pentagons along the adjacent edge. But if we check out the top, front, and side views, there is no convenient way to use normal rotation. Let's switch to the 3D view and click on the rotate axis button. The dialog pops up and the prompt says select objects to rotate. We'll select the pentagon on the right and click on done. The prompt reads pick start and rotation axis and we'll select one of the ends of the adjacent edge with the left mouse button. The prompt changes to pick end of rotation axis and we select the other corner using the left mouse button. The prompt changes once again to say pick first reference point. We'll immediately enter the angle of rotation and click on OK or the Enter key. The rotation around the adjacent line, serving as the axis, is complete. There is no doubt, having two different methods of rotation is extremely helpful. The Scale Group After 3D printing a design, we sometimes find that our original dimensions are either too big or too small. Scaling can be done by the slicers for 3D printing, but it's much more precise to go back into our design and use one of the scale verbs in moment of inspiration to make the necessary changes. Clicking on the scale group button reveals three scaling methods in moment of inspiration. Scale. This method scales in all three dimensions at the same time. The steps are, Select objects to scale. We'll select the leftmost 10 by 10 by 10 cube. Pick origin. While we can actually choose any point on the screen, we usually select the center or an edge of the object. The placement will affect the direction of the scaling operation. Pick first reference point. Again, this is usually a point on the edge of the object. Pick second reference point. As we move our mouse, the object changes size in all dimensions. For more precision, we can enter a value in the scale factor text box. We'll enter a value of 1.5 and the object is scaled to 15 by 15 by 15. Scale 2D. Scale 2D works like the default 3D scale, except it only affects the object in two axis directions. In this case, the X and Y. The third direction, in this case Z, remains unchanged. We use the same steps to perform the scaling. From this view, it looks exactly the same. But from the 3D view, we can see the difference. The cube was not scaled in the Z direction. Scale 2D is very helpful when resizing for 3D printing because adding height also adds a lot of additional time to print. Scale 1D. This option limits the scaling to one direction. This time after picking the origin point, the prompt says to pick a direction. We usually use an X, Y, or Z axis direction. But, we'll undo to show that any direction can be used. How you to scale a design after seeing the first print of an object is relatively common when first learning 3D design and printing. But as you can see, it's a very easy verb to use when needed. This concludes the introduction of the verbs found in the first row of palette 3, tab 2. The next video in this series will introduce the verbs in the second row of palette 3, tab 2. 
We sincerely hope that each new session gives you new tools that allow you to create ever more beautiful and satisfying designs. And remember, the most important tool is your own brain.